Hi everyone, today I'm reviewing some paper pads. So paper is so, so, so important when it comes to colouring. Um, a lot of people aren't sure what kind of paper to use when they're printing off, say, Etsy images or illustrations. And it really does make a massive difference depending on what pencils and what media that you're using. Uh, to have the right paper for that is really important and to get the best out of your colouring materials. So Colt Pens have sent me a selection of art pads to have a look at. Now these are quite large, but I'm going to be cutting them down. I'll show you how to cut them down so that you can use them in your printer. But the four pads that I've got to show you are for all different mediums. So let's have a look at the first one then. All of them are the same size and they're all spiral bound at the top. They're also micro perforated so you can just remove them really really quickly and cleanly from the pad i wrote some um, little notes down here on the underside of the pad but then i realized on the back <laughs> it has all the information already so this one here is the watercolor pad it is very very thick it's 300 gsm which for you american people is 140 pounds because i know Across different countries, you you weigh the uh, paper differently. So 300 GSM, 140 pound paper. This is natural white and there are 22 sheets in this. Doesn't sound like a lot, but you can see it's a massive, really thick pad. So that just tells you how thick the paper is. It does have the textured surface that we need for when we're doing watercolour painting. And it says that it's best for watercolour, ink, gouache, graphite, charcoal, wax crayon and oil pastel. Because it's got that texture, it's going to be able to pick up the more wetter medias like the pastels. And then obviously it's going to be great for wet media like watercolour. So this particular paper is made from 40% cotton and 60% cellulose. Now, all of these pads are made by an Italian company called Stiflex, which is an amalgamation of two words for them being stiff and flexible. So the paper, as it's made out of cellulose, you know it's gonna have that really good, strong durability. Then we've got this one here, which is for sketching. So in this one, it's exactly the same size, but it's 120 GSM paper, which is 74 pound. And there's 80 sheets in this. Again, it's micro perforated and it has a smooth surface. So this is best for graphite pencil, charcoal, ink, marker, felt tip pen and coloured pencil. Now with it being a smooth surface I am going to test the coloured pencil uh, properties and just see that it's got enough tooth to pick up the coloured pencil pigment. But this is sketch and I think this is probably more for graphite and drawing and sketching. Next one, look at this gorgeous artwork. I absolutely love the covers that they've made for this. This one is the drawing pad. So same size again, 160 GSM this time, which is £98, and there are 50 sheets in this. Again, it's a smooth surface, but as well as the 50 sheets that you've got of the paper, you also get 15 transparent sheets. So they're at the back of the pad, and they're like tracing paper, or I think they call it drafting paper, and it's, like I say, it's basically like a tracing paper. So this particular pad is best for mixed media, graphite pencil, charcoal, pastel, coloured pencil, crayon, fountain pen and ink. And I'm going to be testing them again. It's a smooth surface, so we'll see how we go. But there's the actual paper itself. It's natural white. And then at the back, you can see they have these really thick, it's almost like vellum, actually. It's definitely thicker than a tracing paper would be. So you get 15 sheets of that in the back. And then finally, we've got this pad. This is the marker pad. So same size again, 300 GSM, 140 pounds. So it's exactly the same thickness as the watercolour book. You have 30 sheets of extra white paper in this. So the previous books were natural white, which isn't quite as bright and stark of a white as this one is. And that's just really to make all of your ink that you're using it makes it really bold on the page that you've got this ultra bright white surface and it's also ultra smooth so the other ones were smooth they've probably got a little bit of tooth in there this one is ultra smooth so this is best for your markers felt tip pens spraying so if you've got like an airbrusher graphite pencil and pastel and this is pure cellulose so it's so strong so long lasting so durable and it's also apparently internally sized which sizing is where you add 
uh, it's, I think it's a chemical medium that you add in during the process when all of your uh, paper fibres are pulp. You add that in when it's wet and then the sizing means that all of your ink and your media that you're putting onto the surface of the paper is going to stay on the surface of the paper for longer before it absorbs. If you have paper that's not sized, you'll notice that anything you use on it is absorbed into the paper very, very quickly. And you don't really have time to mess about with blends and things before that ink has settled in and dried in. Whereas this has been sized, so it gives you that surface to play around with before you know you want a finished product you've got a bit of time to do your blends it's also resistant to erasures and scraping so it is really really durable have a quick look in there and i can tell you obviously you can't tell but it is incredibly smooth and yeah it is really nice and crisp and white and all of these pads like i say are micro perforated so you can pull them out uh do it really cleanly and get them printed on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to print an illustration on each one of the pads, each, each piece of paper. I'm gonna print that out and then we're gonna test the mediums that it says that each piece of paper is good for. Now, as I said, these pads are quite large, so they do need cutting down. Now, here in the UK, our standard paper size for documents is A4. And in the US, I believe it's the US letter, which is like, 11 by 8.5 something like that so we do have you know different sizes but with these being a bit larger you can trim them down to whatever size your printer will take so that is what I'm going to do now I'm going to get my trimmer and show you how easy it is okay I've got my trimmer underneath here and I've got the marker pad I'm going to pull one of these out so let's test this micro perforation first of all Gosh, this is really thick paper, but it's come off really nicely. So I'll put that to one side. So this here is a piece of A4 paper. Let me move the trimmer out of the way a sec, and then I can kind of show you what I mean about the size. So here's the marker pad paper, and here's the piece of A4 document paper. So I'm just gonna line that up, and you can see the difference in the size. So you can see it's quite a lot larger, but it will, trim down to the width of the US letter as well. US letter is slightly shorter but slightly wider than a piece of UK A4. So you've got the room to sort of cut it down to whatever you want to do. Now what I normally do when I'm trimming down paper is I will get a ruler and a pencil. There you go. And then I'll put my template on top. So I'm using that A4 paper as a template. And it's quite difficult to see because they're both white. <laughs> but I'll try and do my best to sort of pencil around that paper. Aha, right, got it. <laughs> I know it seems like a bit of a laborious process. But like I say, once you've done it a couple of times, you get faster. And you, you sort of realise what you're doing. So I'm going to go down the side as well so that we've got a nice little template for where we want to cut. OK, there we go. So I've got my guillotine. This is an A3 size guillotine because I think the A4 ones would have been too small for this size of paper. Of course, you can just cut it out with scissors, you know, or you can do it anyway with a blade on a cutting mat. Whatever you find easiest, it's just that I've got this trimmer to show you how I do it. So I'm going to line up the line. Not sure whether you can see that because this bar's in the way. But I'm going to line it up and then we're going to trim it. Okay, so we've done that side. Brilliant. And then we'll line this up and do that side. So actually I should bring my blade back forward, shouldn't I? There we go. <laughs> Uh, right, so lining it up. Okay, so that's that's more or less how I did it. And once I've done that with a sheet from all four of the pads, I'll come back with them printed and we'll have some testing of media. 
Okay, so here's all four pieces of paper cut out. Hopefully you can see on the camera, I don't know if it's picking up the colour difference, but these natural white ones, they, they look white until you look at this <laughs> and you see that this is like really super bright white. This is the marker paper. So just to show you that difference in colour, hopefully the camera is picking it up. But now I'm going to go and print the illustrations. Okay, so I've printed an illustration from Deria. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. It might be a Patreon one, I can't remember. If I can find the link to it, I'll leave it in the description. So, this is on each different paper. We have got, let's have a look. <laughs> um, this is a sketch paper. So I think it's the thinnest of them all. Yes, it is. The sketch paper is the thinnest. Um, still feels like it's got a bit of tooth to it though. I think they all have, apart from the marker paper. Then we've got the drawing paper and the back here the very thick watercolor paper now i have an epson eco tank printer and it does play up sometimes when printing on thicker paper however i found out how to fix the settings on it so just in case anyone's having the same problem when you go to print if you click on printer properties and then onto maintenance and then into the extended settings you will see a little bar that says print density now usually it's set to zero if you set that all the way up to 20, it should print because I tried it on different settings and it wouldn't take this watercolour paper and then I put it to 20 and it did. So just in case you're struggling with how to make your printer take thick paper, that might help you. So that's the watercolour and then of course the marker. So this being a colouring channel, I'm not going to be fiddling about with charcoals and things because I, I don't know what I'm doing so I can't give them a fair wrap. Um, I don't know whether it's going to work well or not well i don't know what that is <laughs> so i'm going to be sticking to things that we would use to color with so first of all let's start off with the marker paper then so i'll put these to one side and grab some alcohol markers because that's what they're made for so i've got my copics next to me uh, i'm not going to color the whole thing we are just doing a very simple demonstration on this today so let me grab a few different colors of copic Let's go for, what about G09, G05, G03? So we've got a good green blend there and we'll have a go on these almost leaves of her dress. Why don't we do this little leaf here? So I'm gonna get the G09. Let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see. And let's see how these lay down. So the first thing that I'm noticing straight away is that the ink is not bleeding outside the line. Sometimes you find with certain paper, the more absorbent papers, the ink will spread. You know, you only have to touch the nib to the paper and the ink will spread. With this, it's staying exactly where I'm putting it. So I'm just going to do a few little strokes. I'm not going to you know, go mad with the blending because I want to see how the paper works rather than trying to do it all with the with the marker. So that's like a first coat. Let's do the other side. It does feel really, really nice to colour with markers on this kind of glossy paper. When I say glossy, it's not, you know, it doesn't, it's not like a mirror gloss, but it's so smooth, the ultra smooth paper that really helps the tips of the pen glide and also you're not going to be ruining the nibs because some papers that are maybe thicker in texture and a little heavier in texture you would find that they would grip onto the fibres of the nib and sort of fluff them and it can ruin your marker nibs so that's a first coat um, it's probably not even dry because it, it is sized, like I said earlier, so it sits on the top for a while. So it might be an idea just to let that dry and move on to a different one and we'll come back to it. Um, what else did the marker paper say that it could take? Let's have another quick refresher on the back. Marker felt tip pen, graphite pencil pastel. I know for a fact coloured pencils won't work very well on this paper, but I will try some water-based pens. So what do I have here to try that's water-based? Let's go with, uh, I've got some Ecoline pens. These are water-based brushes and I've just picked three random reds. So let's see, what shall I do? I'll do one of these, I'll do this one. I'll do this leaf. Obviously I'm not going to be finishing these 
as I said, just purely for demonstration. But with these being water-based, it will be interesting to see how they lay down and how the ink sits on the top or absorbs. These are nice and juicy as well. But of course, with water-based pens, you do find that if you go over the same area more than a couple of times, you're starting to rip and pill the paper. Because it's, it's water, you know, it's gonna do that. Alcohol is completely different. It almost evaporates rather than dries. Oh, this is a bit of a strange orange to have put together, but hey-ho. So that's like a first coat. Now, as you can see, it looks very different to the alcohol marker. This is a lot smoother. Whereas here, you can see a lot of darkness, a lot of dark speckles and splodges, and that is because it's water-based. But I guess if you weren't doing a blend and you just wanted to colour an area with the one marker and you're using one layer, it will probably be fine. So I'll just try that here. Obviously, I'm, I'm trying to stay in the lines, but the more I try, the more I'll go out of them. It's just... Sod's law. So there we go. Um, we'll see how this looks when it's dried up. It could make a bit of a difference, but obviously you're not just you're not going to get perfect blends. These kind of pens, water-based pens, are really good on mixed media or watercolor paper. Um, marker paper, not so much. So we'll leave them to the side, and I'll come back to that afterwards. Let's move on to the next type of paper. We have got we've got the watercolor. So. Just remind myself what they said it could take so obviously watercolor ink gouache charcoal wax crayon oil pastel okay so i'm going to try watercolor and we'll try the water-based ink as well um don't think any of the rest of it applies so let's see watercolors uh, i'm just going to pick these straight out the drawer i haven't um prepared as usual <laughs> But I've got a set of normal watercolours here and I know that I've got a brush somewhere. This one, and it's got some water in it. This is a, a standard water brush. Um, let's give it a go. So here we go. I'll do the same thing. So let's get some green going. Let's put a little bit of water just on the greens there. Could do with just seeing which green is which because it's hard sometimes. Mm, let's just try... Let's put some on the fern green as well, because that might go a bit better with the um, the spring green. Okay, so let's get a bit of this paint going. Um, I've used the light colour first, haven't I? Oh well. <laughs> so we'll just do some. highlighted areas in the middle. I'm not prolific with watercolours, um, I'll admit that, but I am just trying to see how the paint reacts to the paper, seeing if there's anything interesting that I can tell you, you know, if it's, um, if it's not working quite so well or if it's doing a really good job, I'll try my best. But hopefully the more seasoned watercolourists out there will be able to look at this and sort of tell a little bit more. Now I know with watercolours, you can have a really, really wet application. You can have a dry application. You can have wet on wet, wet on dry. And the, what we're doing now, I believe is wet on dry. So maybe I'll try some wet on wet further down the page. So there's some pigment on there. And now we just need to and blend it in a little bit. Like I said, I've probably got watercolourists watching this video and shouting at me because I'm not doing it right, but <laughs> um, you can definitely move the paint and it seems to have a lot of tooth on it to soak up and absorb all of the water as well that you're using. So I don't know, maybe I'm overworking it or something. I've got to... Um, I've got to get a bit more proficient in watercolour media before I can give this a proper review. But uh, let's try some wet on wet then. Let's do this one here. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of water out of the pump of this pen. 
and just wet that area. Okay. And then let's grab, let's, let's grab this nice kind of, it's almost like a teal, a deep teal colour. And let's put that on and see what happens. So you get this amazing blooming effect when you put wet on wet. And it almost just creeps wherever it wants to go, you know, it's, you've got less control with a wet on wet application. Uh, let's have, let's see if I can just wet a little bit of this purple and see what that does. Let's put it into the tip of this leaf and sort of let it decide where it wants to go. A little bit on the top as well. I'm sort of encouraging it to, to blend a little bit, but I'm sure you can see, you can see how it just creeps wherever it wants to go. So just going in with a, with the brush on its own, with no pigment on it now, just to, like I say, just encourage the pigments round a little bit, but this is very, very wet, so it's going to take a while to dry. So I do want to put it to one side as we do the other papers and then come back to it and see what it looks like when dry. But it looks nice so far. Uh, what else did it say we could use on this? Oh yes, the water-based markers. So I'll come back to the eco lines. Uh, again, water-based uh, concentrated brush pens. So let's have a go with this then. Um, let's do this one. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this ink on either side of this leaf and then we're going to use our water pen like a paint to bring that colour across Now, if we'd have tried to do that on the marker paper, in fact, I'm going to show you. It may not have worked the same. So I'll just do a little bit on this. And then we've got our water pen. I'm going to bring it out. It looks OK at the moment, but very, very quickly you start to see these really dark areas where the paper is actually breaking down and it's peeling away and already I'm finding it quite difficult to work the bits that have dried. So if you just look you can see the difference between them. Obviously this isn't dry yet but you can tell, I don't know, maybe I should bring it up to camera so that you can see it a bit better. But hopefully you can see what I mean by the paper is starting to come away. You see that? It's peeling away whereas on this it's that thick it can soak up all of that water and it doesn't need to it doesn't need to leave it on the surface it will just soak it up so that's the pen what else do I want to try let's see watercolor ink gouache I don't know if I've got any gouache but it works pretty similar to watercolor um, so graphite obviously you can use graphite I mean I don't use it for colouring obviously but you can use graphite on here and you can see the texture of the paper actually when I show you with graphite. So I'll just do a bit of a swatch there with pencil and bring it to the camera and you can see the texture in the paper. So it's very heavyweight but like I say they're still very wet at the moment so we're going to leave that for a bit. Another thing you can do though, another tip if you are if you're using water-based ink, actually I've got a, got a thingy. I'm not prepared, you know what it's like, it's chaos. So uh, let's get the orange. If you've got a non-porous surface, something like a plate or a dish, ceramic, porcelain, you can put a little bit of your water-based ink onto that first and you can pick it up with your brush and you can use it as a paint. And obviously with this being a watercolour paper, it's going to take that really, really well. It's not going to degrade and you can get some 
really nice gradients going on. So rather than using the pen directly to the paper, you can do it like this. And it can be just another, another thing to have in your tool belt, really, another way to use your markers. If you wanted them to have a little bit more of a wash look, you know, like a watercolour wash, but you don't have watercolour paints, but you've got pens, you can use them like that and they'll end up giving a very painterly effect. So I'm just layering a little bit more on the top to bring that gradient a little bit more vibrant. And of course, this being a water paper, it will take lots of water, so you don't have to worry about that. See, that's pretty nice, just, just applying it that way. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a bit and we'll put them to one side. And we'll, oh, <laughs> things are falling on me. We'll put that to one side and we'll test out another type of paper. So this is where I'm coming into my sort of forte now because we're going to be testing pencils. So let me just pop these paints to one side. So we have got the very thin one, which is the sketch paper. Let's see how that takes pencils. I'm intrigued with it being so thin, but it does still have a little bit of tooth. So let's grab some pencils very quickly. Um, we've got we've got a vermilion and let's get a deeper red. We've got a crimson red. And then how about the orange? So let's try and do a red orange blend. Again, I'm just going to work on a small leaf so that you can see for demonstration how this applies. So these are Prismacolor pencils. I will try an oil based, maybe a polychromo, just to test because I know that Prismacolors are very easy to colour with. You know, they're, they're like butter and they will blend on pretty much any surface. Um, so I don't want to give an unfair advantage to the Prismas. Hopefully you can see already, you can see the grain and the gradient of the tooth of the paper. Whether or not they'll layer is a different matter. And we've got the vermilion, just layering that over the top of the deep red. Now, of course, you can do very light layers. I'm more of a burnish, get the job done and go. <laughs> So it depends, of course, how your particular pencil technique is. You know, you might like doing your light layers and really building up the colour. And I will try that with the polychromos, like I said. Um, let's put a little bit more of this red in the top. So I'm just trying to blend out that in-between line a little bit better. I'm not sure the paper is that great for layering. I'm going to grab a white. I mean, if this was the only paper that you had to colour on, it wouldn't be the end of the world. You know, it's, it's absolutely fine. It, you know, you can imagine that all being coloured the same and you wouldn't really see any anything wrong with it. But I can see looking at it that it's not too great on layering. It won't sort of blend away the marks as well as other papers would, but there's nothing wrong with it. You know, like I say, you could make it work. Let's try polychromos. So I'll try and get similar colours so we want something like a true red, a bit of a deeper red. What's this one? Yeah, deep red. We'll, we'll give that a go. It's not quite the same. And then we want a vermilion kind of colour. Might be in the other stack. Uh, here we go. This is like a vermilion. Dark cadmium orange and then an orange. Hmm. Let's go for this one. It's what, I, it's what I've got out to hand at the minute. So let's try it with the oil-based pencil then. I'll do the leaf on the other side. Now, polychromos usually need 
much lighter hand than the wax base pencils. So I'm going to do that here and give them a fair shot. A little bit of shade in there. It's great if you can get illustrations that are sort of pre-shaded like this. Really, really helps beginner colorists figure out where to put the dark areas and the light areas to give it some dimension. Next colour. Plenty of tooth left on the paper because I am only doing very light layers. Like I said, you know, technique, and it's so important, technique and the paper that you're using. Somebody else could come along, use this exact same paper, these exact same pencils, and they might be able to get a better result. They might get a worse result. It really just, a lot of it is down to the pressure that you use when you're colouring. So I'm going in my second layer now, just building it up. You can see the colour is coming together at a much slower rate, but it does seem to be blending better. So this is my third layer, right? And I'm using a soft to medium pressure. It's definitely not hard, but it's definitely not the lightest I could do it either. And we've still got tooth left on the page. So we can do a fourth layer. I think, I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that's about about right. So what was that? Four layers with the oil based, and it looks so much better, so much better than this one. But I did only do the prism colours very quickly and with hard pressure. So anyway, at least you've seen in real time kind of what pencils can colour like on this very very thin paper. Uh, this one was what did I say it was? I keep forgetting the sketch pad. So, I mean, if you can create a result like this in just a few layers on the thinnest paper, it's got to be decent quality because it's not always about the actual thickness. It's about the, the, the grain and the texture that's on the paper. You could have a really thin paper, but if it has a nice grain on it. It could work well. So, again, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I like how that's come out. Uh, what else did it say that we could use on this sketch one? Let me just check. Uh, so graphite charcoal ink marker felt tip pen colored pencil so felt tip pen again you're going to have the problems exactly the same as you had with the marker paper it is going to very quickly start to start to pill up you can't really do that many layers i just want to give it a go just to see i'm not trying to stay in the lines anymore can you tell uh, it's definitely speckly and then this is like the third layer and it's just starting to pull up the paper now. So it's not made for wet media, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend it for wet media. Let's put it that way. Uh, definitely better for pencils, this one. And probably your oil based more than your wax based. Right, the last paper that we need to test is the drawing pad and this one is the 160 GSM um, with the transparency sheets in the back. It says mixed media for this one. So that's telling me that I can use 
wet things and it should take it and i'm not you know i'm not believing that at the moment but we will see now mixed media that can be things like your gelatos your um more waxy art supplies you know like this i'll, I'll check i'll test these actually while i'm here so these are faber castell gelatos and they're kind of like a crayon so they go on like a lipstick almost and i believe you can use them with water as well i haven't quite tested these yet properly but i, I believe you can so you can put that on there and then this is a yellow and you can blend those together with a bit of water so let's see how that goes got my water brush hmm, it's melting quite nice i think that's more testament to the product than the paper doing too badly with the wet media actually with the, with the water that I'm putting down on the page I can't see any pilling of the paper just yet and I have been over it a couple of times Let's see if I can just blend that out a little bit better hmm I'm actually quite surprised by how this paper is taking the water let's try it with an eco line I'm just testing out everything <laughs> that I can find. So let's try a different colour of this eco line. It's getting a bit boring doing the same colour. Let's do this one. This is ultramarine deep. Let's see how this goes then. So mixed media, it says. And these are really nice and wet and juicy as well. Again, I'm not trying to stay in the line, so <laughs> seems to have gone on quite nicely. Let's try it with a bit of water, see if we can blend them out. See, we'd be able to do this on watercolour paper very, very easily. But this one, can you see it's not it's not changing the strokes whatsoever, and it is starting to pill now. So wet media, water-based media definitely not pens and water gelatos are okay i guess this is why you test things isn't it just to see what it can take but no i just want to do a quick test of if i put this down how quickly does it spread hmm it doesn't spread very quickly what if i do that on the watercolor paper It's quite good actually, it doesn't spread. So yeah, definitely wouldn't use it with uh, water-based pens. Um, I've got another water-based pen here. This is a Stationery Island brush pen. Let's see. Oh, this is a bit dry. Haven't used these much either, so I don't know why it's dry. Let's see if the water will let us move the pigment you get a bit out of it but yeah I, I wouldn't say this is wet media i'm gonna lay down the gauntlet and say it's not so now let's try some colored pencil on there um let's do the prismas first slightly shiny for some reason it doesn't look shiny but when I start to put the wax on it's probably the wax itself that's making it feel very slippery on this paper let's put a bit of vermilion on and then where did my orange go oh it's here <laughs> holding it Okay, let's do another layer. So 
I'm doing it a bit harder this time. It's pretty much burnished now. Now, I mean, I am using quite a dark red, um, so that could be the reason why it's not blending as well as it could. Let's try a polychromos blend. You can probably hear Rosie in the background. She's still making her throat noises. We think it's the collapsed trachea. Bless her. She's on, she's on medication for it, but maybe she needs to change her dose. It doesn't seem to be working as well as it was at the start. But just in case you can hear her, that's what that noise is. <laughs> yeah, the polychromos are working better. But we are taking a little bit more time with them so that's probably why so yeah i think the polychromos are definitely acting better with this paper than the prismacolor were but i don't know whether i would say that this is the best one for coloured pencil. I would probably say, let me just do a check. Mm, I would say that this one is better. This one is the sketch pad. Whereas this one, the draw, the drawing book, is probably better for your actual sketching. Uh, if you were using graphite and pencils and things like that. I wouldn't say it's very good for mixed media. We've seen what those results are like for mixed media. Um, not that I'm a professional, but I wouldn't recommend it for that. So definitely if you're using graphite, try the draw pad. If you're using colored pencil, the sketch pad, this one. And let's look at the other tests now that they're dried a bit more. So this is the marker, the alcohol marker. You can see it does not work whatsoever with anything uh, water-based, but the pens actually, that's just one layer as well. That doesn't look too bad at all. And the watercolour, the best result is actually picking up the ink of your water-based pen off of a non-porous surface and then dragging it down with water. That's the best result on here. You can see where I've put the original greens on here that it's very, very speckly. I'm not really sure how to get rid of that or what I'm doing wrong. I'm sure it must be me that's doing something wrong. And this was wet on wet, wasn't it? Still got speckles. Um, again... I really don't know what I'm doing there, but hopefully somebody in the comments can sort of give me some advice because I would like to use these papers. They are very high quality papers um, made by this Italian brand Stiflex. And the, the amount of cellulose that's in the paper shows you how strong and tough and durable the, the paper is. And it's been very, very well made. So yeah, what do you reckon? <laughs> I really like the marker paper for the alcohol markers. That's something I will be rebuying in the future because it's very hard sometimes to find a decent cardstock that lets that ink sit on top and lets you play with it before it dries. Um, so that's really good. I love the watercolour paper for this particular technique. I think that's worked very, very well indeed. I need to become a bit more proficient in watercolours in order to use this to its fullest potential. Uh, this was the one that the coloured pencils worked best on, wasn't it? It was the sketch pad. Wet media, not too bad, but you can still see lots of strokes and lines. It's not made for that, in my opinion. And then the last one was the drawing pad, which I think, yes, which I think is probably better for your graphite drawing. Although the gelatos work quite nicely on there, but still it's quite streaky. The pencils weren't bad at all. They just weren't as nice 
as they were on the sketch pad. So hopefully that's given you a bit of a rudimentary look at demonstration of these papers. Uh, like I say, it's not something, these other medias are not something I'm well versed in. So take it with a pinch of salt. Why not try a pad for yourself? Uh, if you're into watercolours, just try that pad and see what you think. Same with markers or coloured pencils. Let me know what you reckon. I'll leave the links for these in the description if you're wanting to test them out yourself. And I'd really love to know how you get on with them. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.